Hi, I'm Liza for 1AM Media. Hi, I'm Casey for 1AM Media. And we're here with Paradise News today. Hi, I'm Michael. I play keyboards in Paradise Spears. And I'm Jordan. I play lead guitar in Paradise Spears. I didn't know <laughs> there's the steps there. That was yeah. a moment I was hanging you on your play words. Anything. I, mean, I knew what you played, but I was still like curious. I'm like, was right. he really? <laughs> Two months ago, the album has a new sound. Tell us about it. Yeah, I mean, what what I like to think of it as, you know, the reason it has a new sound is just because we, as musicians, as people, have kind of grown, we've evolved, we've matured, and I'd like to say that's sort of what our sound has done itself. You know, before we kind of we uh, played more music, kind of like you know, all time low maybe, and for us, it kind of represented. Uh, more of like a punk rock type of younger phase that we were going through. And since then, I feel like we've sort of uh, just started growing up a little bit, we've matured a little bit, and that's you know, maybe the direction we're going yeah. with. When we, when we released Yours Truly, like we hadn't really toured much at all. We haven't traveled, and after two years of traveling, we've definitely changed as people, and like you said, as musicians too, we've been exposed to a lot of different kinds of music and stuff, so we our, all of our tastes had grown a lot, so we wanted to make sure we didn't just release the same album we released two years ago. You know, we don't to let people know that we've grown. Um, people, musicians, and friends. <laughs> what are you trying to say? <laughs> Touring with Parachute is kind of a big deal for you guys. So tell us about the tour so far and what you're looking forward to. We're only a few days in, but I don't think I've missed a song of theirs yet. They're so good, <laughs> they're amazing live. Um, and what's great too is, you know, we just talked about the new direction, like they're very much a band that we like, hope to emulate in some way. So to be able to, well, I'm probably going to start watching them with like a notebook or something and start taking notes, because they are like, they're an incredible band, they're um, something to sort of strive for. Note and, one, learn how to play saxophone. Yeah, the sax that is crazy. Um, but yeah, and you know, it's only a couple days in, so we don't know them that well, but what I got to know so far, they seem really, really nice. And not just like, oh, we're on tour together, I'm going to not be a mean guy. They like seem really, really genuinely nice. Like they want to make sure we're comfortable and that things are going well and everything. So, it's a great tour so far. Dream tour. What big differences are there going from playing small headlining shows to being in a Um, You know, I, I, there's a couple of, of uh, differences. I think one of them is, you know, when we're playing a headlining show, Pretty much everyone in there knows who we are already, and they know most of the words to all the songs, and they're you know they're ready to be Paradise Fierce fans, and they like the music, and you know there's not a lot of uh, guesswork there. Whereas when we're an opening band, a lot of people don't know who we are, so we sort of have to prove ourselves, or we have to uh, communicate to people who don't already know who Paradise Fierce is, um, which at the same time kind of allows us to connect with a broader range of people who haven't heard of our music before. Um, but at, we kind of, uh, our relationship is less, uh, you know, condensed, less uh, strong right away since, you know, we are just meeting them and they don't know our music. It's, it, it is very different, like, even just little things, like, because the playing headlining shows, people know the music, so they know when to anticipate certain moments, yeah. and they cheer for those moments, and that gets you jacked. But like playing for people who never heard of you, they're just like, I don't know this, what is this? So you like, you do something really cool and everyone just stares at you and you're like, dang it, I thought I was cool! Um, but like you said, I, personally what I love about it is you, you really feel like you have something to prove to people because playing for headlining crowds, like, they know every word, they're there because they love the songs and when you're playing with, with someone who has no idea who you are, like, you really have to bring your, bring your best because if you happen to be off or whatever, then that might deter some people being a, a fan in, in the long term, so it's, it's exciting, it's a, it's a rush, you know, like, I can't suck tonight because <laughs> people might hate me, so. You gotta make a good first impression. Exactly, exactly, it's all about the first impression, so. Tell us about the new song that you're releasing in a few days. Okay, what? What song? What song? What's the music? I'm just kidding. Um, do you, do you wanna, or do you not wanna? Sure. <laughs> it's called, it's called Who You Are. Um, I think, you know, I'm not sure about the other guys, but for me it's one if one of, or if not, the most, uh, you know, my favorite song that we've released uh, up to date. Um, it kind of it tells a story, it's, uh, has the new kind of sound that we're going for, 
Um, I don't want to tell too much of the story and like give it away before people listen to it. But <laughs> this interview will this interview be up by Tuesday? No. Okay. So <laughs> it'll have to. Oh, okay. um, no, but I mean, you know, like we talked about earlier with Battle Scars, it's, it's a great representation of the people we've become and grown into the last couple of years. I think who you are is like the perfect, like encompasses everything that we've gone through, um, and it just lyrically is. is my favorite, it's my favorite lyric Sam's ever written. I think everyone really like came into their own and was able to really shine on the song. Like, um, yeah, we've, we've definitely improved as musicians and I think this song shows that really well. And it's kind of, it's great. I'm, I'm very proud and excited to release it because I think it's a great representation of who, who kind of where we're headed, especially for, for a lot of the new fans and new people we'll be playing for on this tour. Like, it's, I'm proud for them to hear this song because I think it's a great picture of kind of where Walmart to bring out the cashier. What items would you buy? Bring out the cashier. Um, sorry, Sam, someone's dancing back there. Um, well, I don't, I mean, my mind goes to horrible things like gun or something. That's like probably a little too, that's a little violent. Um, I mean, maybe like a dress, <laughs> some lipstick, maybe a gun. <laughs> <laughs> One option. Um, wow, I've never. Yeah, I'll, I'm gonna go with that. Maybe like if they had a magazine like How to Kill a Walmart Salesperson, I would buy buy that. I feel like that would freak them out. That would be terrifying. Yeah. You can just cut that out of the interview, right? It's, I don't want people to think we're murderers. No, it's too late. Oh crap. <laughs> What's the worst memory from your childhood? getting dark, man. Holy crap. Um, I, I know mine. This is definitely one of them. I played youth soccer. I think a lot of kids did. And I was playing defense. And I tried to, the ball was coming, like going towards our goal. And their team, I was the only defender and their, their team was closing in. And I was like, I gotta get this out of here. Like they're going to score if I don't get, the, get rid of the ball. So I was trying, like the goal was right there. And I was trying to kick the ball out of bounds. So then they would have a corner kick right into our goal. I started crying on the field. And it, was, it was really bad. I really haven't bounced back yet. So, um, You know, I, th I think I thought of my worst one. When I was probably around six years old, I hated peas, like with a passion. Like, they taste horrible. I didn't like to eat them. But my mom just thought, you know, she's a doctor. She's like, you need to eat healthy peas. Um, Sounds exactly so, like that. <laughs> and so, she, like, we had this bowl of peas that she was like, you have to eat these or else you can't play video games. <laughs> okay, whatever. Um, and like, she's like, it'll go a lot faster if you eat them all in one bite with like a big spoon. Like, this doesn't sound fun at all. Like, I hate peas. And, like, I don't know if I can handle all these, but I'm going to do it, Mom, because you're my mom and I trust you. And so I took a, a big spoonful and I put it in my mouth and like, it was the worst thing I've ever tasted. And I like, like couldn't swallow them. And I remember like, being like, like looking at my mom and she's like, don't you spit those peas out! <laughs> and I ended up running into the bathroom. My sister was like using the sink or something. She's like, what are you doing? I ran in and like, I vomited in the bathroom. And my mom never made me eat peas again. So it had a happy ending. <laughs> the happiest ending possible. If you had to dress the woman for a day in detail, what would you wear? Well, I think we've covered the dress in the lipstick already. <laughs> Um, I'd probably wear a pantsuit to let people know I was a powerful woman. <laughs> um, and then some crazy shoes, because girls get to wear the craziest shoes, and I envy that sometimes. But they can just wear the craziest shoes, and it's okay. You get some nice heels. Just, just the highest heels. Sparkly. Sparkly, maybe light up a little bit. That sounds, that sounds so beautiful. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you so much. I actually, last Halloween, Oh my god. I didn't have a costume and I was with my girlfriend and she was a cheerleader. Uh, and so I went as a cheerleader. I had like a wig and I was doing there stuff. There are pictures. <laughs> they are hilarious. Picks. And I was named Stacy. <laughs> Clearly given this yeah, topic. I got a lot of strange attention that night. <laughs> People looked at me in ways they've never had before. Okay, now we have some fan questions. Would you rather be able to speak any language fluently or be able to talk to animals? Wow. If I could speak any language fluently, would that involve animal language? Okay. 
probably that one. I probably do animals. <laughs> Just because I feel like I could like I could learn how to speak most languages that I want to. If I was really dedicated, I could like learn them. Right. But That's like kind of I can't cheating the question a little bit. <laughs> Is it? Here's what I was gonna say. If you get animals and I get every language, we just okay. travel together. Yeah, and with as long as we can communicate with each other. Yeah, which we yeah, yeah. we'll be fine. So it's a package. Yeah, so we can Teamwork. work together. Team, yeah, <laughs> team it up. If you could have any accent anywhere in the world, where would it be and why? New Zealand, because it's the best. It's a fact. You've done studies. It's the best accent ever. I was actually going to say New Zealand too, but I don't want to be like unoriginal. So well, you lived in Australia, so like yeah. you have the right. Like if anyone does, you yeah, that's not true. Me. I just I, like it because I had a, a, show. a little bit of an Australian accent because I lived there for a year when I was younger. Um, like really little though. Very very little. <laughs> Unless I was like trying to, I was just, like trying to be like a crocodile hunter. Crocky, <laughs> put another shrimp on the barbie. But that doesn't even really sound <laughs> Australian. It's <laughs> terrible. If you were to be reincarnated, what would you be? Well, like, like an animal or time also. Like I can travel in time. Yeah. What? Well, oh, that's weird. <laughs> Probably like a tree, maybe a giraffe. <laughs> tree giraffe, tree giraffe. <laughs> I form my own species. Maybe part tree, part giraffe. Maybe it's just a baby, so I could people just do everything for me for a while. Just eat, eat all the time, cry, sleep. <laughs> Sounds like a pretty good setup. Do you read well on tour and what good books have you read? Michael definitely does. I need to read, but I don't. So I mean, that's a horrible thing to admit, but Michael's a heavy reader. Yeah, I, I try to read like an hour a day in the morning. A really good book I'd recommend is The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Um, it's a really good book. I think the guy who wrote, who wrote it read it so he could write the book. <laughs> Most likely. <laughs> yeah, but I would, right? that's, without a doubt, yes. <laughs> but reading is very important. So do it. Especially the right stuff. It's something that you like. Read, kids. <laughs> what music have you been listening to lately? New uh, new John Mayer album. It's great. It took me a second. I wasn't like that hyped on it. Born and Raised, Paradise Valley. Okay. Came out like a week or two ago. ago. It's, it's good. I at first I was like, ah, this is it's John Mayer, obviously, so it's good. But it's really starting to grow on me. Um, this guy named Ben Rector. It's a new album that just came out. It's pretty solid. Um, and then there's like some older stuff. My parents were huge U2 fans growing up, so I'm kind of like rediscovering them on my own. Jordan, have you, uh, have you ever found what you're looking for? Still haven't found, man. But it's a beautiful, beautiful day. day. Well, Jinx. <laughs> Give me a pop, and it's on video, so everyone knows. Delete, no, it's edited. <laughs> what are you listening to, Mikey? Uh, I've been listening to a little bit of Incubus. They're really good. Um, it's a lot of variety of stuff, you know? With, with Spotify, I feel like there's a lot of kind of single songs that I listen to. I'm like, this is a really good song. And I haven't really dug too much into just like one artist. Michael and I write love songs for each other. Yeah, so, so I'm mean, listening to that. I always mostly. listen to the like most of the time. That's what I'm listening to. Turn that's it your makes my heart beat That's all of life. That's that one's okay. I like the older stuff better though. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Jordan is my love. That's that. Always love me that's, forever. That's my jam right there. Forever and always. Is there another? Song. Is there another question? <laughs> And is there anything else you'd like to add for 1A Media? Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I would say be sure, well, yeah, I, I, by now, this, this is weird. I'm like talking to the future people of Earth. Um, <laughs> we just re have released, recently released a new song called Who You Are, so please check that out. Whether you download it on iTunes or download it illegally, one way or another, please listen to that song because I think you'll really like it. And be sure to keep following 1AM Media for 